Hi, um, I'm Jack Whitehead and I'm doing this video to support a paper that, that I produce. It's a multimedia paper using digital technology for the uh, Living Theory Wiki to celebrate our 10 years of publication. What I'm going to do is to quickly take you through this paper just to introduce some of the central ideas because I think what we've been doing in the Living Theory Research Groups is to create a different form of knowledge to the ones that are traditionally offered in academic journals and academic texts. And for me to communicate what I'm meaning, I really do need to use this digital visual data because what I'm claiming is that even now as I'm speaking to you, I'm expressing a particular quality of energy, which I refer to as a life-affirming energy. And I want to show you the different communities that I'm actually working and researching with, in which I'm claiming that this expression of a life-affirming energy is a central explanatory principle, certainly for me, in explaining my contribution to living theory research as a social movement. And the other value which I hold, which is embodied and expressed in what I do, is this idea of uh, productive activities uh, that carry hope for the flourishing of humanity within these living theory communities. So what I'll do now is I'll just go very quickly through the paper to highlight some of the groups and the individuals um, and it's particular the little video clips that show me expressing these two qualities that I use as explanatory principles. Now the 10th anniversary uh, group at the moment, and this is on the 1st of March 2018, uh, are constituted by Ariana Brigadi, Catriona McDonough, myself, uh, Jackie DeLong, Jika Nadler Collins, Joy Mounter, Maureen Glenn, Marie Huxtable, Maura Laidlaw, Pete Mellett, Pip Bruce Ferguson, and Swarup Brawal. And on the 1st of March, these are the people who are actually logged in to the Living Theory Wiki. Now, as we move into the 10th anniversary year, I know that these groups will actually extend. But I just want on this 1st of March to recognise that these are the people that I'm actually communicating with in terms of this idea of forming a social movement. And then gradually, I hope, we extend and we deepen our understanding of what it, each other is doing as we develop ourselves as a social movement, in particular through our living theory research. Now, having said that those are the individuals just at the moment that I'm hoping to communicate with, I just want to move through particular moments of my history with some of the individuals where this idea of the life-affirming energy and the productive activities that carry hope for the flourishing of humanity are actually being expressed. Now, the first one was <coughs> in 2002 at the University of Bath on the 18th of December in a celebratory gathering led by Peter Mellett, which celebrated the award of the PhD to Jackie DeLong on that day in the university. And the clip, which is only 45 seconds, just shows a moment of joy with an expression of energy and laughter, which I'm saying, look, this is where I'm experiencing this flow of life-affirming energy. And because the whole event was to celebrate the award of a doctorate to Jacqueline DeLong, and Jackie's living theory doctorate explained her educational influence in her own learning and the learning of others and the learning of a social formation through her work as a superintendent of schools in the Grand Erie District Board in Ontario. I'm claiming this is where I'm experiencing this idea of a productive activity. So that's the first one with Jacqueline DeLong. Now, the second one is, again, it's from an early clip from Moira Laidlaw when Moira was on six years of a VSO placing in Guyuan in China. And I went out there to videotape her. It was about 2000. It was in 2002. And I videotaped a lesson where Moira got about 84 students in her class. And I shut down the camera at the, what I thought was the end of the lesson. But then I saw Moira going to the door and I started the camera again. 
and there is this clip which is only a brief it's only a 1.04 minute clip and it shows Moira actually communicating to the students as they were flowing past her and Moira called over one student to actually congratulate her on having the courage to ask a particular question within the class. Now as Moira goes over and this flow of energy that I'm claiming is where I'm experiencing a flow of life affirming energy. This is what Moira is evoking in me and I've checked with Moira and she herself feels that she's expressing that energy. As she moves to congratulate the student on actually having the courage to question a teacher, which in that context was actually unusual, I think that is what I understand by a productive activity that actually carries hope for the flourishing of humanity. Moira is encouraging a student to speak in her own voice, to have the courage to do it, and actually can be shown to be doing this in the video clip. Now, in terms of the third clip, which is about the Skype Living Theory Research Support Group. Now, this is a group that meets on Sundays around 8 o'clock UK time. And these two short clips are taken from the 7th and 18th of January 2018. And they are constituted by individuals like uh, Marie Huxtable, Paula Shaw, Sonny Hutchinson, Sarinda Sandon Baines, Joy Mounter, Robin Pound, Liz Vincent and myself. Now the Living Theory support conversation at this still that I've taken from one of these clips, this is where I'm saying, and you can see on the expressions I believe, as people are expressing what I understand and feel is that life-affirming energy. Now I've also got this a uh, little brief 2.22 minute extract in which the research support group are participating in the conversations which I think exemplify what I mean by the relationally dynamic values that we all hold. Each individual in the Living Theory support group by its nature is actually either creating their own Living Theory, helping others to create their own. And because I hold that living educational theories are explanations in which individuals explain their own educational influence in their own learning and the learning of others and the learning of social formations with values that carry hope for the flourishing of humanity, I hope the connection with this idea that those are productive activities which actually count and contribute to the flourishing of humanity. So that is the living theory support conversation. Now, the fourth item is the Skype of the editorial board meeting of the Educational Journal of Living Theories on the 30th of June 2017 and that is constituted by Marie Huxtable, Jacqueline DeLong, Catriona McDonough, Maura Laidlaw, myself, Pete Mallet and Swarup Rawal and we're discussing the 10th anniversary celebration of EJOTS. And the life-affirming energy, as I say, that I experience with this group, which helps to motivate me, I'm claiming can be actually seen in the still that I've actually included within my paper, in which I believe that that energy is being expressed by everybody, and that the productive activities that we're all engaged in can be appreciated with the statement of the scope and context of EJOLTS, which is actually included in the paper. Now the fifth uh, group and sense of community are the Conversation Cafe on the 12th of January 2018. We have been meeting, and uh, this is weekly, for many years now, where a group of people are coming together just to share what is actually what really matters to them and to assist each other in terms of producing their own accounts of what it is they're actually doing. At the moment, we've got Sonny Hutchison, who is actually getting ready to uh, submit her doctorate. There's also Chris Jones, who is also hoping to submit her uh, thesis, her doctoral thesis, this month uh, to Liverpool Hope University. And the brief clip which actually shows the conversations in which we are responding to Chris as she talks to us about 
an idea which is vital for her thesis about living inclusive and inclusional empowerment. And the focus is on helping to clarify what is inclusive, the difference between what is inclusive and inclusional, which in terms of Chris's living theory, this is what I'm actually claiming, is part of a productive activity which is actually carrying hope for the flourishing of humanity within our Friday conversations. Now, the sixth clip is, um, and still, is from the Network Educational Action Research of Ireland. And you'll see that there is a clip which contains, a little still which contains a film, um, uh, an image of Murray Roach, Mary Roach, Katrina McDonough, Pip Bruce Ferguson, there's also <coughs> Marion Glenn, Bernie Sullivan, and also Jane Connell. Now, the first five um, actually helped to form NERI. This is the Network Education Action Research Island. Mary, Catriona, Marin and Bernie all were awarded their Living Theory Doctorates from the University of Limerick in 2006 to 7. And they have continued to work together to extend their influence, to deepen it, and they formed, with Bruce Ferguson, the Network Educational Action Research Ireland. And in the paper, I've included four of the books that the four of them have produced, either together or individually, which actually show what I'm understanding by productive activities that carry this hope for the flourishing of humanity. Their latest book is actually on learning communities in educational partnerships, Action Research as Transformation. And I've written a review on this book because I think that it is a very significant, highly original and really influential, a potentially very influential in terms of CPD work around the world. We've also got on number seven, the Living Theory Postdoctoral Research Group. And this usually meets um, every Sunday, right about lunchtime, but there are people from different parts of the world that get into the Skype. So, for example, if Bruce Ferguson joins the um, EJOLTS group or the postdoctoral group, it is from New Zealand. Saroop Rawal from India. In terms of the research support group, Liz Campbell is in Canada. A number of us are in the UK. So you can actually appreciate that these Skype conversations where you can see the images on the screen um, actually reduce that geographical distance so that people can feel the presence, the immediate presence of the individual through the video and the Skype application. The postdoctoral group that you can see on the screen um, includes Eleanor Law and this one, Judy McBride. And Eleanor and Judy are working on their own writings, Judy to submit to the um, wonderful paper on what is known as metissage, which is a way of braiding the voices of a group of people together into a coherent account. And that is now being submitted to EJOLTS for publication. Eleanor is actually running um, and helping to organise a community shop. And part of the uh, inquiry that Eleanor is actually undertaking is to look at the development of this community shop. So in our postdoctoral group we're all looking at different um, inquiries which have actually led from our doctorates. I mean, Eleanor I think is about 2006 when well, Eleanor got her Living Theory doctorate with the title of Love at Work and it was the first time that love had actually been included in the title of a Living Theory doctorate. As we move on um, to the Adlerian Living Theory Research Group, this is a group that meets uh, Tuesday evenings and from clockwise in the still that you've got here, there's Rosemary White, Margaret Wadsley, Jack Whitehead, Robin Pound, Mary Huxtable and Carmen Tamas. Now, Rosemary um, is actually moving into a new community and is looking at her own practice. Margaret has registered for her doctorate at Cumbria University and is also engaged in trying to explain her educational influence in her own learning and the learning of others, but drawing insights from Adlerian ideas. So this is what I understand by, as I say, both life-affirming energy, which again, I've got a still there, which actually uh, shows me 
uh, claiming that I actually experience this flow of life affirming energy with the Adlerian Living Theory Research Support Group. We've also got this idea of productive activities. The ideas from Adler about community feeling, about social interest and recognition reflex are ideas which I think will actually um, be becoming more and more known as contributing to the flourishing of humanity. So that is the eighth point. Now the ninth point was something I'm particularly interested in because it's from a Bira Symposium from 2014 where we were actually, the group of us, focusing on the creation of an educational epistemology with living educational theories. And that was with Jacqueline DeLong, Marie Huxtable, Mark Potts, G. Adler Collins and myself. And that was at the 2014 annual conference of the British Educational Research Association in September at the Institute of Education, University of London. Now, this is where I got brief clips from each of the five people participating who are all contributing to that idea of living theory research actually contributing, not only contributing, but actually generating a new form of educational epistemology. And with the five people, you've got clips in which I'm actually saying that as I watch, they are evoking in me this flow of life-affirming energy. And also, because I see that what each person is doing is actually seeking to live as full of, as possible the values that carry hope for the flourishing of humanity, this is what I'm understanding by productive activity, that I'm actually engaged and supporting these productive activities within communities of learners. So that is the paper that I've actually... Um, put into the eJOLTS wiki space, but I wanted to see if by including this video, as I scroll down the paper, this helps to understand my, uh, my purpose in actually producing not only the written text and the multimedia inserts, but also with this account where I'm seeking to communicate something crucially important about the relational dynamic that I experience myself within communities of learners. Okay, I hope you enjoy it.